What's up you freaking geniuses? So in this video I'm going to teach you how to find angles and arc measures of tangents, chords, and secants. I'm going to go over several examples because there's a lot of different ways that these lines can intersect. Alright, so here we're going to start with a more kind of basic example. So here you can see we have a circle, we have a tangent uh, line down here, and we have a chord. So this is a case where a tangent and a chord intersect. And as you can see, it creates an angle, right? This missing angle that we're looking for right here. And it actually creates two angles, right? So it has this angle right here, and it also has this angle on this side, okay? And these two angles create special relationships with the arcs of the circle, okay? So for instance, this angle right here creates a relationship with this arc right here, and this angle on this side creates a relationship with this arc measure right here. And the relationship is that the angle is exactly half of whatever the arc measure is, right? So here, if we're looking for this angle, well, you can see that we're given that the arc measure from A to B on this side is 130 degrees. So half of 130 degrees is 65, right? So that means this angle measure is, and I'll just write it over here, x is equal to 65 degrees. Boom. All right, here's another similar example. So as you can see, we have our circle, and we have a tangent line right here, and another chord. And they're intersecting right here and creating two angles, right? So we have this one that's given, which is 125 degrees. And in this case, we're looking for the arc measure. Uh, and I'll just highlight it right here from J to K, all right? All right, that's what's missing, the arc measure. So again, the angle between the chord and the tangent is always going to be half of whatever the arc measure is. Or another way that you can think about that is that the arc measure is always twice as big as the angle. So if the angle is 125, well, if we just double this, that would be 250, right? So this arc measure right here is 250 degrees. Boom. All right, this is the last example of this kind that we're gonna do. So again, we have our tangent line right here, and then here, this time, this is a secant, right, because it doesn't just end at the edge of the circle, but rather it's a line that goes straight through. But in any case, all the rules still apply, all right? So we're looking for this angle right here at x, and all we're given is that this arc measure over here is 140 degrees, okay? So in order to find this angle over here, the first thing we have to do is find this arc measure, right? So remember, there's 360 degrees around an entire circle, and we're given that this side over here is 140, so if that's 140, then this side would just be uh, 360. Uh, we can make a better looking three. Let's do a handsome three up here. All right, 360 minus 140, and that's equal to 220, all right? So this arc measure is 220 degrees, all right? Now remember, the angle is always half of the arc measure. So if this is 220, then that means this angle right here is equal to 110 degrees, boom. All right, now, as you can see, this problem is a little bit different, right? So here we have two chords that intersect, and we're looking for this missing angle right here at x, and we're given uh, two arc measures. So this arc measure is 130 degrees, and this arc measure down here is 156 degrees. So in order to find this missing angle, all you have to do is take the average of these two arc measures. Okay, and the reason we specifically have to use these two arc measures is because, again, this is the angle that we're looking for, right? So if I extend the arms of this angle right here, and we could do a little straighter, you can see that the arc that gets intersected by this green angle right here goes from here to here, okay? Now, our green angle right here also has an opposite angle, right? This one. Okay, those two angles, since they're opposite angles, are always gonna be equal to each other. And this angle right here, if I extend the arms of this angle, goes from here all the way around to here. Okay, so our green angle right here intercepts this yellow arc, and our other green angle, right, the opposite angle, 
intercepts this other yellow arc, right? So to find the angle of either one of those, since they're gonna be the exact same, again, you just have to take the average between these two numbers. So to find the average of these two numbers, we just have to add them up, right? So 130 plus 156 and divide that by two. So on top, that's 286 divided by two, and that's equal to 143. Uh, so this angle right here is 143 degrees. Boom. All right, now for this next example, as you can see, we have our circle, and this time we have two secants, but they basically still work the exact same way as chords, right? So all those rules still apply. And we're given that, uh, let's see, this angle right here is 102 degrees. This arc measure is 95 degrees. And we're looking for this arc measure up here in green, which is y degrees. Okay, so the first thing that might be helpful to find would be maybe this angle right here that I'm gonna draw in blue, right? Because this angle is the one that opens up to the arc measure that we're looking for. So in order to find this blue angle measure, we can see that this angle is supplementary with this yellow angle, right? Because they're both along this same straight line right here. And as we know, two angles along a straight line add up to 180 degrees, right? So if this is 102 degrees, that means this blue angle must be 78 degrees, right? So now that we know the arc measure and we know the angle measure, now we can use those two numbers to solve for y, for this missing arc measure. And the reason for that is because, remember, when you add up the two arc measures, so y and 95, you add those two up, divide them by two, that should be equal to the angle measure, right? So now we have enough information to set up an equation to solve for y. So if we add up again the two arc measures, so let's do that, let's say y plus 95, and we divide these by two, those should be equal to the angle measure, which we now know is 78. So to solve for y, the first thing we can do is get rid of this two by multiplying both sides by two, right? Those cancel out. And here we're left with y plus 95 is equal to 78 times two, and that's equal to 156. So solving for y, we can subtract 95 from both sides. So here we get that y is equal to 61. All right, so y, this angle, or sorry, this arc measure up here is 61 degrees, boom. All right, so here is the last one that we're gonna do like this. So again, we have our two chords right there. We have this missing angle x. We also have this missing arc measure, 2x minus 30 degrees, but we are given this arc measure uh, down here, which is 30 degrees. Okay, so we are given this arc measure and this arc measure, kind of. So maybe it'd be helpful to find one of these angles, right? They're gonna be the same anyways. So the one way that we could do that is by using this angle right here, which is a little bit difficult because we don't actually know what number, what angle this is, right? But we do, again, have a straight line right here and so we know that these two angles, x in green and this blue angle are supplementary, right? So we know that this angle x plus this angle should add up to 180 degrees, okay? So one way we could write this blue angle is we could say that it's 180 minus x degrees, okay? And we can write it like that because again, we know that these two angles, the green angle and the blue angle should add up to 180 degrees, but on this side, where the blue angle is, we're gonna subtract x, right? Because the x is on this side, it's where the green angle is. So we're not gonna include it as part of our blue angle, right? Because for example, if x was 50 degrees, then this angle up here would simply be 180 minus 50 degrees, or in other words, 130 degrees. Okay, so we have an arc measure here, and here, and we have our angle now, right? So since we have all three, now we can set up an equation to solve for x. So remember, when you add up the two outside arc measures and divide them by two, they should be equal to this interior angle, all right? So again, let's add up our two arc measures. So we have 30, right, that one down here, plus this one up here, which is 2x minus 30, okay? 
And then if we divide those by two, they should be equal to our arc measure right here, which is 180 minus x. Okay, now let's simplify some things. So up top we have 30 minus 30, so those are gonna cancel out. And we're left with 2x over two, so those twos also cancel out. So then on the left side, looks like all we're gonna be left with is just x. All right, so we get x is equal to 180 minus x, all right? We can put the x's together now, all right? Those cancel out, x plus x is 2x, and that's equal to 180. So here we can see that x is equal to 90. Okay, so this missing angle right here, x would just be equal to 90 degrees, all right? Now, if we plug in an, uh, 90 degrees right here for this x, we would have 180 minus 90, which is also equal to 90 degrees. And now lastly, we just need to uh, find this arc measure by plugging in a 90 for x right there. So we get two times 90 minus 30. So this is 180 minus 30, which is equal to 150 degrees. Boom. All right, here's the last type of problem that we're gonna do. So as you can see, we have uh, our circle again, we have a tangent up here, and then we have a secant right here. But as you can see, this time, these two lines, the tangent and the secant, are intersecting somewhere outside of the circle. Okay, so when these two lines intersect outside of the circle, you can see they form an angle, right? Now, in order to find this angle, it's gonna be the opposite of when they intersected inside, right? So when two lines intersected inside of a circle, we would add up the two arc measures and divide by two, right? Now, since they intersect outside the circle, we are going to subtract the two arc measures and divide by two, all right? So in order to find this angle, we just need to subtract these two arc measures, 76 and 178. So let's do that. Uh, so 178 minus 76 and divide by two. And so that's equal to 102 divided by two, which is equal to 51. Okay, so that means this angle right here is equal to 51 degrees. All right, here's another one. So again, we have our circle and we have two secants this time, but it's still the same thing, right? These two secants, they intersect somewhere outside of the circle. And this time we're given the angle where the two lines intersect. We're given this short little arc measure and we're trying to find this big arc measure, right? So again, we can use the same formula. So when you subtract the arc measures and divide by two, they should equal this angle, right? So in order to solve for this big arc measure A, we could simply say A minus this little arc measure, right, 44, divided by two should be equal to the angle, which is given as 30, all right? So here to solve for A, we can first get rid of this two by multiplying both sides by two, right? those cancel out and all we're left with on top is a minus 44 and that's equal to 60 all right so then if we add 44 to both sides right those cancel out so we're left with a is equal to 104 boom and that's degrees right so a is equal to 104 degrees all right here's the last example that we're going to do so again we're given our circle and we have our two secants and we're missing everything here, right? This big arc measure, this little arc measure, and this angle, right? But fear not, my little piglets, we know how to solve this, right? So we know when we take the big arc measure and subtract the little arc measure and divide by two, that should be equal to this angle, right? So let's just set that up. So let's take the big arc measure, which is x plus 70, and subtract the little arc measure, which is x plus 30, and divide by two. And that should be equal to this angle, which is x over two, All right? So now here, just combining like terms, we have an x, a positive x and a negative x, so those cancel out. And then on top, we have 70 plus 30, which is equal to 100. So on this side, we get 100 over two is equal to x over two, all right? So as you can see, we have the same denominators, so that means the numerators should match, right? So here we could see that x is simply equal to 
100, right? So now we get 100 over 2 is equal to 100 over 2. So now that we solved for x, now we can plug some stuff in. So if we plug in 100 over here, we'll get the big arc measure is 170 degrees. If we plug in 100 here, this is 130 degrees. And if we plug in 100 here, uh, 100 divided by 2 is 50, right? So then this angle is 50 degrees. Oh, that's a gross zero. Boom! So if you found the video helpful, definitely leave a thumbs up down below. And if you have any other questions or want to see any other examples, just let me know in the comment section below.